Hey guys, it's me, Zach. And Kian, your boys from back the Sports another, Scoop. Back with another NFL video. Today is part two of ranking the NFL draft. Unfortunately, Charlie couldn't make it today, and neither could Surge. Uh, Surge has yeah. never made it, which is unfortunate. Yeah, well, he'll be here on weekends. He, he's free on weekends, so he'll be here. He's free on weekends, so he'll be here for the weekend vids. Um, just remember, we are very close to 100 subscribers. 98 so subscribers, please, guys. 98 subscribers are very close. Please give um, give a like, comment, and hit that thick subscribe button if you're new. Yeah. Um, smash it. <laughs> smash it. Yes. Yeah. So, and <laughs> also make sure make sure to watch the full video. We we have some good stuff to say. We're pretty knowledgeable about the NFL, so you might find something interesting. And uh, yeah, all right, let's get into. It. Okay, so quick recap. If you haven't watched the last video, I will plug that video right here. Um, it's this is a part two of our part one. We did half of the NFL draft. This is the second half. So we ended at yes. Austin Jackson getting drafted to the Miami Dolphins offensive line for UFC. And we are starting at take number 19. Damon Arnett, cornerback out of Ohio State. Um, next to Jeffrey Okuda, one of the best corner, arguably, in the NFL, or in the NFL, in the um, in college football. Uh, going uh, picked at number three. Um, so, you know what? I think the Raiders obviously have a gaping hole at cornerback. They they desperately need one uh, after trading Gary on Conley. Um, and they do have uh, uh, Trayvon Mullen, I believe is his name, uh, cornerback from Clemson that they drafted uh, either last year or two years before. And he, he's definitely going to be able to be developed to be, become a good player. But I don't know if this is the best pick for the Raiders. I think se going secondary is definitely a need of theirs, but I think going maybe Christian Fulton or um, AJ Terrell even. Or was he already picked? Uh, I think so. I think so. He might have been. Okay, then not AJ Terrell. If he was on the board, then maybe AJ Terrell. Maybe Jalen Johnson. Um, I just don't think this is the right pick for them. Uh, I think DeMond Arnett's a, a mid to late second round player, so I think they definitely took him too early. And if they were interested in a trade down, then maybe that's something they wanted to do if they wanted to get uh, Demon Arnett. But I think definitely waiting till the second round w would have been much smarter. And taking a different player here, there there's so many good players still on the board. I just don't think Demon Arnett's uh, the best choice here. Um, Zach, what do you think? Um, I I completely agree. I think they could have taken um, a better player. There were still good players that were on the line, such as Clavon Chasen. He was still um, he was still not picked up. Mm -hmm. He actually got picked up in the next uh, mm -hmm. next uh, pick by the Jaguars. But um, honestly, he is talented. But it's just like it's not a great pick for your first pick, especially when you're nineteenth pick. Mm -hmm. You could have picked a much better player. Um, yeah. It's a strange pick. I mean, of course they do need him, but I. Honestly, I think it's an F. Like, it's not a great, it's not yeah. a great grade, you know. Yeah. It's not a great pick. Yeah, um, I, I give this an F also. They they could have they could have um they had Jalen Rieger open for wide receiver because yeah. they they might need some wide receivers. Um, you know they had uh, J Justin Jefferson, uh, yeah. another wide receiver from LSU. You know they could have uh, they could have yeah. picked him. Yeah, they maybe just getting Carr as many weapons after drafting Henry Ruggs, but yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, so I don't love the pick. I think they definitely could have got him later. So I give I give this pick. A C. I just don't think it's a great pick. Um, I'm going right. to give this an F yeah. because it's not good. Not yeah. a good pick. All right. Let's go to the next pick. And here off the board goes a dominant pass rusher in Clavon Chase on. Another one of the uh, incredible defensive players on that LSU defense that carried them to the national championship this year. And don't get me wrong, obviously, their offense as well. Um, I, this is a great pick. This is a great pick for Jacksonville. I mean, he, he's a beast. He's I, I can – already tell you he's going to be a good NFL player. He, he's going to be a solid NFL player that, that's going to be a dominant pass rusher in the future. And I think him pairing up with um, uh, him taking the spot of Calais Campbell and probably soon to be Yannick Ngakwe, I think it's a good pick. I think it's a steal here. I think he definitely could have gone earlier. Um, and I think, I think uh, Jacksonville is definitely going to be happy with this pick down the line. Um, Zach, what do you think? I completely agree. I just don't think that they anticipated Clavon Chasen to be available. He was expected to go much higher, um, but he did. Uh, he would, the Jaguars were lucky to get him. Um, I think it's a steal. Uh, he, again, as you said, he will be able to replace Yannick Ngakwe, um, but once the Jaguars decide to trade him, so I think he will be a very dominant player in the NFL, and he was very dominant on LSU. So I think I, I give this an A. Yeah, I give this an A, yeah, this an a as well. Pick. I think it's a great pick. Next pick, we go to – here goes another receiver out of the stack receiver class in Jalen Rager from uh, the TCU Bullfrogs. Um, 
I like this pick. I mean, they needed a receiver. If Philadelphia hadn't taken a receiver, all of their fans would, would be like, see you later. I mean, they, they definitely needed to take a receiver here. And don't get me wrong, Jalen Rager is a very good receiver, uh, and a very fast yet undersized receiver, good hands, uh, um, a deep threat, um, definitely. But I think with players such as Brandon Ayuk and, and Justin Jefferson on the board, I think you might want to take one of them here instead of Jalen Rager. Um, but Jalen Rager, they don't really have uh, that player that, that can go down the field and be a fast player that can burn corners um, after they trade a Golden Tate to the New York Giants. So – I think I'm going to give this pick um, a B because I think they definitely need a receiver and they address that problem. But I think there's definitely uh, better wide receivers that they could have taken here. Zach, what about you? Um, so I think that they also could have taken Justin Jefferson, who is much better and was projected to be much better. Um, Rieger does fill a huge need, but again, Jefferson is projected to be much better than Jalen Rieger. Um, they, they, um, they actually uh, they had an opportunity to trade up for C.D. Lamb but they want the Cowboys catch him, which is unfortunate. Uh, but uh, I give it uh, also a B because they did feel a huge need, but it's not the best pick they could have chosen. Yeah, you lagged a tiny bit there, but it's all right. Well, hopefully okay. you guys heard that. Yeah, I think we heard everything. Okay, let's go to – also, guys, remember, uh, don't don't take, like get mad at us because, like, Zach lags sometimes. It's hard to kind of make sure. So just – Keep that in mind. And then here we go. Justin Jefferson goes off the board right after the Eagles could have taken him. And I think this is definitely a steal for Minnesota. Uh, huge receiver. Uh, this receiver class is just incredible. Like, literally every pick, there's just receivers that are just very, very talented. I think Justin Jefferson is definitely going to be a good replacement for Stephon Diggs. He's that big receiver you can throw up to, and, and, he, can, and he can make a catch. And I think he's going to be a great – um, a great uh, addition to the Adam Thielen, Dalvin Cook kind of offense. And uh, I think Kirk Cousins is definitely going to love throwing to him. And I think he has a chance to, to be incredible, uh, especially uh, Adam Thielen uh, getting a little bit older. I think after he retires, like Justin Jefferson is going to be that guy from Minnesota. And I think, I think it's a great pick. I think it's a steal here. And I think they're very happy that uh, he fell to them, uh, especially the, the blue – or not the blue, the purple, white, and – Yellow fits perfectly for him. Uh, Zach, what do you think? <laughs> I think the I think the need is obvious. Uh, the Vikings the Vikings traded away Stefan Diggs, so they really needed to replace him. Uh, Justin Jefferson is not someone who should have been available because the Eagles should have picked him, as I said before, and Denver would have considered him at number fifteen had Jerry Judy not been available. Uh, the Vikings also wanted Clavon Chasen and AJ Terrell, but they were still able to land a talented player who fills a big need. Right. All right, let's go to the next pick. Kenneth Murray, another another linebacker off the board. He goes to the Los Angeles Chargers and just stacks up this defense that they've done so much uh, over free agency. And I think he's a dominant uh, run-stopping linebacker. He, he's fast. He can cover tight ends, and, and he can definitely pass rush as well. I think he's a very underrated pass rusher. Um, I think this is a steal for them. I think their defense is going to be – a shocker for a lot of people next year having if Derwin James is healthy Joey Bosa uh and um Melvin Ingram on that defensive line and uh having Drew Drew Tranquil another linebacker being paired up with Kenneth Murray and then they're 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 uh corners who are, are incredible in in uh Chris Harris uh recently signed from Denver in free agency Desmond King and, and Casey Hayward possibly the best secondary in the league next year it definitely has potential to be that with so many veteran players uh that and i think this defense is going to be really good and i think it's going to shock a lot of people and i think a lot of people are overlooking this team it's especially on the defensive side of the ball so i think getting justin herbert uh upgrading quarterback position and then getting this uh dominant linebacker who's going to be good for a while i think it's a great pick uh i give this pick a uh, a zach what about you um so I agree with you that it will be great for the defense, but I don't think it will be so great for the offense because they did sacrifice a third round pick to move up for Murray, which I thought was a mistake because the Chargers now lack resources to keep improving Justin Herbert's supporting cast. Since uh, the Chargers do have holes in their offensive line and they don't have much backfield beyond Austin Eckler, um, they should have used this pick to build around Herbert, especially after giving up a valuable pick. I mean, 
he's he's a good player, but I just don't think it's the right pick. I give this grade a C. Wow. Oh wow, that's a hot take. I mean, no, the defense that the, the defense their defense is going to be stacked. But what's 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 defense without any offense? Like the right. defense can be great, right? But yeah, but what's what's the offense season? without any defense? But I've, I I agree with you. I think no, that's defense, true. That's their true. defense but, is stronger than still, their offense. Um, yes, and especially I, now because they traded up. Yeah, I, mean, I think I their think receivers are think, still good though. They have Keenan Allen, Mike Williams. I think, I think. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I'm I talking agree. about the offensive line. Like, yeah. I don't even think that Justin Herbert sometimes will be able to get the ball out of his hand before he's sacked. It'll be like the the Giants like yeah. two years ago. It'll <laughs> be it'll be like that. Yeah. So I don't think I think um Justin Herbert he's he's a good quarterback. I think he'll manage to ha- handle himself. But until they patch up those holes, it'll yeah. the ship will just keep sinking. Okay. I I think their defense will be able to hold them up, but I, I agree with you. I think offense they will need to definitely improve. Their defense is a uh, being that main factor on the team. Okay, let's go to the next pick, where we have Cesar Ruiz going to the Saints. Uh, I he's he's the best interior offensive lineman in the class, so you can't say it's a bad pick, but it's not necessarily filling a hole they need. And but at the same time, I I personally think the Saints have the best roster in the NFL. They don't really have holes anywhere. Uh, linebacker, you could have an argument for. I think that's the only one. So maybe Patrick Queen would be a good pick here. I personally think I, if I was if I was a Saints fan, I'd be upset with this pick, especially after trading up to draft Eric McCoy and having him play 16 games and playing very well. Uh, and then there's the argument of moving him into the guard position, but they had a uh, Larry Warford and Andrews Pete, who were both Pro Bowlers last year, so that's not an option. And then tackle, but there's a there's a big difference from him playing center to going to tackle. Um, and I personally think there's usually a, a, a significant size difference uh, between centers and uh, tackles because centers kind of have people around them, so they don't need to be as big. Um, I think it's a good pick. I think he's going to be good, but I think it's kind of a waste of a pick when they already have uh, the players that they need. Uh, Zach, what do you think? I completely agree. Um yeah. I think that they didn't really need to take this pick. They could have maybe taken a receiver to help make their um them more flexible with their contracts for or, or something like that. I don't know, honestly. Yeah. Um, I still think it's a good pick because you know if one of the centers get hurt, he can always be a backup. Yeah. But um, you know he's not really, as you said, he's not really much in need. Um, I mean the Saints are outstanding. Honestly, they are definitely have one of the best rosters in the league. Um, Drew Brees, Michael Thomas. It's just, they're 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 crazy. Um, but yeah, I think um I think they could have taken maybe a better um yeah. yeah. Um I give this pick a <laughs> I give this pick a uh a uh, uh like a C plus. Um that's low. Um yeah. I just don't I actually give it a I um right. I actually give it a B. Okay. I give it a B. Okay. Let's go to the next pick. Also, guys, sorry, Zach's, Zach's dog is barking in the background. Don't worry about it, Zach. It's fine. Yeah. Um, okay, now another top receiver, Brandon Ayuk, going to the San Francisco 49ers. I think this is a, this is a, a great pick. I think people – it's not necessarily a steal. I think people definitely projected him going here, but at the same time it is for what they're getting from this receiver. Incredible catch after the run. Um is going to be very useful for Jimmy Garoppolo. And I, I think they filled a hole that they desperately needed going into this season. Uh, trading Emmanuel Sanders um, to the Saints, uh, stacking the roster even more. Um, and Debo Samuel is going to be on the other side of him, who, who is a very good receiver and, and was very good last year. So I think this combination of receivers is going to be very beneficial for that offense. And I think he'll definitely be a good player. And I think he'll, he'll, he'll get a lot of targets next year and, and a lot of catches. Um, most definitely. Zach, what do you think? Um, I completely agree. He is a great player to pick. Um, he obviously needs uh, to fill with Emmanuel Sanders gone. Mm. Um, I don't exactly love the, that they traded up for him because considering how few resources the 49ers have outside of the first round, um, there is a decent chance that Ioke would be available for the 49ers at spot 31. Um, right. but if not, they could have snatched many of the other talented receivers, right. but I just don't think it's a smart idea to trade up. I'm going to give it a B plus. I give this uh pick. Yeah. Same B plus. I think, I think it'll be a good beneficial pick for that team. Uh, all right, let's go to the next pick where we have possibly one of the most controversial picks 
in the draft. Horrible pick. Uh, (laughs) Already Zach vocalizing what he thinks. Um, Zach, you can start if if you want. All right. Um, I'm just saying uh, he is uh, he is a good um, he's a good quarterback, right? But of course, this means um, they just they just signed Rodgers to a two year contract. They don't really need another QB right now. I mean, they just signed Rodgers two years yeah. ago to a contract. Yeah. They don't really need another QB right now. They're basically telling Rodgers, "You're out of here," which yeah. is which is not exactly um, it's not exactly the best. Um, me- it's not exactly the best message you want to send. Yeah. Um, they might as they might as well be saying, "Oh yeah, you're getting traded." Um, mm-hmm. I mean, they traded up for him too, like. Which I, I think was dumb because I don't think any other yeah. team were taking him here. Who are they attempting to jump yeah. for, for love? Who? Yeah, right. Like it's it's not a smart pick. It's just not. Hmm. They could have taken uh they could have taken yeah Men anyone just, else yeah anyone <laughs> else they could they could have taken Patrick Queen yeah anyone else they yeah could have taken anyone yeah and they they chose um, probably the, the worst pick they prob they yeah. possibly possibly could have chose. So I, I'm not as harsh about this pick as you are. So I agree with you. I don't think it's smart of them to basically say to Rodgers, this is your last year. We have a quarterback that we're going to develop and then he's going to possibly start over you. Jordan Love is is like a poor man's Patrick Mahomes. Um, people are comparing him to, which is a really good comparison going into the NFL uh, since he just brought them to a Super Bowl. Um, I think he, personally, I think he has the highest ceiling out of all these quarterbacks. He has a, a huge arm. Um, and, and, uh, is very good out of the pocket and, and can rush the ball definitely. Um, but I think, yeah, trading up is not smart here, especially, I don't think any other team would have taken him. I think the only team that possibly would have was the saints. Um, but that was picks, um, ahead. And, uh, I, I think it's just, it's, it's not something they need, especially, want like receivers is something they need they have Devontae Adams that's basically it uh they they need to address receiver especially in a a receiver class stack this much I don't think it's smart to to first of all be telling your quarterback basically your veteran quarterback your franchise quarterback for so long that has brought you to uh, consecutive playoffs to be to say hey we got we have this new guy you're basically getting kicked out um and I think receivers are much more uh needed uh position on that offense so I think taking uh, a different, taking someone else, a receiver would have just definitely been a better idea here. And I, yeah, I, I give this pick. It is hard to grade this pick because I like the pick for the future, but for now I don't because they're in win now mode right now. And win now mode, you draft exactly, your exactly yes to, to help your team to give Aaron Rodgers more um, weapons on that offense. Um, I'm gonna give this. I'm actually gonna give this pick an F. I hate it. Honestly. Yeah, okay. I mean, I'm going to give this pick – I'm going to grade it now. So, now I give this pick a um, uh, a C. For the future, I, I give this pick an A. I think he's going to be a good quarterback and he's going to be their franchise quarterback that they're going to want after Rodgers uh, either is traded, which I maybe, maybe, maybe not, or if he is um, – uh, retires. Um, or, if, yeah. Um, so, I think this is – You have it. to remember – you have to remember that the Packers fan base and the Packers franchise are known as a win now, uh, win now franchise and win now uh, fan right. base. So they're not really worried about the future. So if if mm-hmm. I was a Packers fan right now, I'd be super disappointed because mm-hmm. especially wasting picking... a first round pick on 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 the exactly exactly like they um the Aaron Rodgers who's led them to so many good things, done so many good things for the franchise. They're basically booting them out like. I mean, it's not it's not a good look. It's not a good look. Mm. Uh, okay, let's go to the next pick, where we have Jordan Brooks, uh, linebacker out of um, out of Texas Tech. Their their um, rock, I-, I can tell from watching highlights. I didn't know much about this player. Um, their basic their rock on that defense. I think he's the best player on that defense. Um, and he's a good pick. He's an outside linebacker. He rushes. And he um, can get to the quarterback and is also very good at run stopping and can cover very, uh, decently well. Um, I think it's it's one of those things where where if Patrick Queen's on the board here, you t- I, I I take him. I know they have Bobby Wagner, very, like pro- possibly the best now that Luke Kuechly retired, uh, inside uh, linebacker in the league. 
But I think Patrick Queen is just going to be an incredible linebacker, especially Bobby Wagner getting older. I, I, th- I don't like the pick here. I want to give this pick a uh, B minus. Um, so, yeah, Zach, what do you think? Um, I agree. I mean, uh, they didn't they didn't trade down from the first round pick for the first time in nine years. So congratulations to them. Um, Jordan Brooks is someone they could have attained by actually trading down a bit. Um, as we know that that a team was considering him early in the second round. However, uh, the Seahawks really needed to bolster uh, both sides of their defensive line. Um, mm-hmm. Linebacker is not an immediate need, so I'm not. I don't really love this pick, but it is a good pick because they do need some defense. I'm gonna give it a. Yeah. I'm gonna give it a B. I'm gonna give yeah, it a and B. that's actually a very good point. They trading Jadavion Clowney. I think yeah, the definitely defensive line is a, is is something they need. Um, so maybe even they trade up and and maybe snatch the Clavon Chase on early where he was picked. But so for now, I think it's a solid pick. I think it'll be a good linebacker, and I hope hopefully he proves me wrong, and he becomes a uh, a good uh, addition to that defense. Um, another team that's in win now mode. Um, so hopefully he can help them uh, uh, win games. Let's go to the next pick where finally Patrick Queen goes off the board. Something I think he should have been taken a lot earlier, even in the late teens, as um, Zach, you've talked to me about. Um, and then letting him go to the Ravens. Possibly. It must best. be like a, it must be like hilarious because yeah. like they watch like they watch teams make stupid picks. Yeah. Um, and allowing them to great scoop him up. I mean, they were bad picks were made up ahead. Uh, Patrick Queen, as I said to you earlier, could have easily been chosen in the late teens. Um, but they are getting him at number twenty eight overall, as which is he is going to be a very good replacement for C J Mosley. Mm-hmm. I think it's a, I think it is. The Ravens were shocked. When when they heard Patrick Queen had not been yet drafted, he he's incredible. He he is a r- incredible player. He's a very underrated pass rush player. He's really good in coverage, and he he can do everything uh, a top level linebacker can do. Um, and hopefully he can bring uh, that to the next level for the Ravens. And it just stacks their defense even more. Um, and linebacker is the one position they needed on their team, and maybe you could argue wide receiver as well. Um, and I think even they're in talks with getting Jamal Adams, and that would be insane pairing him with uh, Earl Thomas. So I think the Ravens are delighted to have him here, and I think um, I think it's a great pick. I think he, I think if I was him, I'd be I would be happy to go, be more than happy to go to um, the Ravens and Lamar Jackson. So now he's not running after Lamar Jackson. I'm giving um, this pick an yeah. A, easy A. Uh, I give this pick an A+. Plus. I think this is one of the most underrated picks in the draft. Um, all right, let's go to the next pick. Isaiah oh, yeah, Wilson. Definitely. Uh, tackle out of uh, Georgia. His other uh, teammate also tackle at Georgia. Andrew Thomas getting drafted early in the first round uh, to the This New wasn't York, surprising. Yeah, New York this Giants. This wasn't surprising. I think that um, the, the Titans – Get a steal here. I think trading trading Jack Conklin, everyone knew their intentions were going to take a tackle, especially them also being in a in a build around Derrick Henry, uh, re-signing him. Um, and I think if they can produce the same or better, or if Derrick Henry can can improve the offensive line and produce better or the same or better as he did last year, this this offense is going to be incredible. Uh, having Tannehill back and uh, AJ Brown as receivers, I think this. I think I think he's a good pick. I, I think he's going to improve the offensive line, and it's something they needed. And I think um, the the way he's going to be seen if he's doing well is based on the production of Derrick Henry and how many sacks is is uh, Tannehill taking. Um, and I think it's a great pick. I think he's going to be he's a six seven huge huge player. He's going to bully people on the outside. And I think I think the Titans are more than happy to take him here. Zach, what do you think? I completely agree. Um, I mean, it's not surprising because with uh, Jack Conk- Jack Jack Conklin, <laughs> Jack Conklin gone, um, <clears throat> Jack Conklin gone. <laughs> no, you go. <laughs> Jack, Jack, Jack Conklin gone, uh-huh. and um, the Titans love to use their running game to bully teams. Um, um, Wilf, Wilf, Jesus. Wilson, <laughs> Wilson was <laughs> Wilson was good athleticism and his ginormous size should be able to overtake Dennis Kelly for the starting spot at the right tackle 
as a rookie probably. And I think Derrick Henry will be able to function um, at the same rate that he's been functioning, if not better Mm -hmm. because of this new addition to the team. Yeah. So I give it, I give this pick. If anybody anybody wanted to know, I, my voice cracked. Like, yeah, (laughs) (laughs) I I give this pick a, um, a B plus. I, I, I'm going to give this pick a B plus as well. Okay. Let's go to the now, next. Now, we move on to the Miami Dolphins. Noah Ignobunky. Igbenogny. Igbenogny. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's surprising I, for two reasons for me. First, the Dolphins needed to keep building around Tua. There are some solid, and there are still some solid tackles available. Second, Miami has already spent so much money on Byron Jones and Xavier Howard. Why spend such a major resource on another cornerback? on another defensive player. Uh, we, st- we know that the Dolphins still needed a quarterback, but um, uh, I just don't know if that's the right pick to choose in the first round. Yeah, right. Especially yeah. having three first-round picks, you want to utilize them all very well. But if you think about it, if, if there's one team that can make a bad pick, it's the Dolphins with three first-round oh, picks. Look at, look at them. Look at them last year. Like, yeah. they horrible were the, record. Yeah, they, they, were, they were the laughing, laughing stock of the yeah. league. Yeah. And, like, Hopefully they'll get a little bit better this year because they'll have a – well, they, Tua is going to be injured um, this year. But no, next what you, year, hopefully – What? No, he's not. He, no, he came back. Isn't he injury. injured? No, no, no. He came back. Oh, okay. No, he came back. Hey, sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry. Yeah. Um, but he came back from injury, so he might be a little bit uh, – he might struggle a little bit. But hopefully mm-hmm. he's going to be um, a big improvement. Um, and I just hope that they will do a little bit better than they did last year because yeah. last year was atrocious. Right. So – my opinion on this pick. So Didn't I, the Giants our, lose to them last year? What? Didn't the Giants lose to them last year? I'm not sure. Um, maybe. Um, that, would, that would be really sad. <laughs> yeah, me and Zach are Giants fans. Um, so about this pick, <laughs> I think – so I, another kid who does a podcast with us, Charlie, you might have saw him in the last episode. I – he kind of like swayed my opinion a little bit. So I have kind of a – this is a good and bad pick for me. I think – in terms of a bad pick, they definitely needed to address other things after I'm pretty sure paying Byron Jones, he's the highest paid corner in the league right now, signing him in free agency from the Cowboys. I think having those two cornerbacks and him and Xavier Howard, it's not a smart pick here to take another corner um, instead of maybe going for receiver. I think going offense, like you said, it, and taking someone who can give to a, a Tungo Vailo weapons this season. Uh, maybe a receiver here, maybe even a running back after Kenyon Drake um, was gone, and maybe even another tackle after drafting Austin Jackson, maybe even another offensive lineman. Um, but I think – and then on the positive side, though, Xavier Howard does have an inj- uh, injury history, a very big injury history. When he's healthy, he's incredible, one of the best corners in the game. But when he's not, having another corner like uh, uh, Noe Igbenogane – um, it's going to be definitely beneficial for them and um, um, definitely going to gonna, gonna uh, uh, benefit them uh, a lot. All right, let's go to the next pick. I think – no, second to last pick in the draft. Jeff Gladney, cornerback out of TCU, going to the Minnesota Vikings, uh, them addressing a problem, huge, them addressing a, a gaping hole – in that um, secondary where they really – they traded their three corners besides Mike Hughes, letting go of uh, Xavier uh, Xavier Rhodes – sorry, Xavier or Xavier, Xavier Rhodes, um, um, uh, um, uh, trading – or uh, letting Trey Wayne go to free agency and then to be signed by the Bengals and then letting Mackenzie Alexander go to free agency and I think also uh, get signed by the Bengals. I think if they hadn't taken a corner here – you know, he could. I think he would have slipped to the second round, but I think it's a good pick. He's a, a little bit of an undersized corner, but is is a fast and can get to the ball. That type of corner, that is a very good uh, man on man and zone zone coverage cornerback. Um, so I think overall this is a good pick. I give this pick a um a B plus or a B. What do you think, Zach? Um, I agree. Um, they did uh, move. They did very well to move down and park themselves ahead of Kansas City to pick the player the Chiefs wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, the Vikings are getting a very talented player who would have gone higher if it wasn't so. If, if it wasn't for some injury issues, mm-hmm. this pick does seem like a steal, though, as Minnesota is in big need 
of such a player as Jeff Gladney. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I completely. I also, I give, I, I'm gonna give this, uh, I'm gonna give this uh, an A minus because they did okay. really need this, and they took the Chiefs away from a pick that they really wanted. Mm-hmm. Now to the last pick in the first round, the running back out of LSU, another LSU player off the board. I think he's at the fourth player. I think from LSU or fifth player. Wait, fourth. Joe Burrow, Kevon Chase on Patrick Queen. Yeah. Oh no, and Justin Jefferson, fifth. Fifth player from LSU off the board. It just shows their dominance um, in uh, college football last year. So I like this pick, and I don't. I, I have very mixed opinion about this pick, as well as uh, the Noe Gunagane pick. I think he is a very good running back, and I think he, he will be um, a great for them, especially being a, a very good receiving back and being a little bit – he is a little bit undersized, but Patrick, giving Patrick Mahomes more weapons, which I totally agree with, but I think their offense is just so good. One of the most, if not the most, productive offensive in the NFL. And I think this is just going to make it more productive, and I don't not like the pick. I think it's a good pickup. But I think going corner here, although Jeff Gladney's taking maybe Christian Fulton, maybe Jalen Johnson here, it is a better pick for them in terms of defense, especially after letting Kendall Fuller go to free agency. They don't really have that corner that you're like, oh, wow, that's their number one corner. He's going to shut down the receivers uh, week in, week out. So I think definitely uh, didn't address a need, but it's definitely going to be beneficial for them. And hopefully they can uh, later in free agency uh, or, or um, just get a secondary player to pair up with Tyron Matthew. Zach, what about you? What do you think? Um, so I think this is a great pick. Andy Reid, uh, Andy Reid's running backs need to be potent receivers out of the backfield, and Edwards Hilaire fits the offense so well for that reason. Uh, running back was a big need for the Chiefs because you know, Green Hunt. Um, yeah. But uh, he will make the he will make the offense so much more explosive. Um, I think he's a, I think he's a great pick. I'll give him a B plus. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That will that will end it for us over here at the Sports Scoop. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure again, as we said in the beginning, we're so close. To, I'm gonna check right now. I think we should be at 98 subscribers. We're so close. If you guys are new, you found this on on YouTube. Uh, make sure to subscribe. Like we would love to have you. We post daily content and especially we, with quarantine, we'll, we'll, we're yeah. working. We're working yeah. here every single day. School's almost over. We're just gonna be here every single day over the summer. Yeah, grinding it out. Pumping yeah. out the videos for you guys. So and you I'll have the, uh, the link to uh, our first video right here. But really, guys, make sure you guys um, – uh, I'll link – I said in the earlier in the video, the part uh, one, I'll link that right uh, – the both those videos right here. Make sure you guys definitely go check those out. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, all of that. Comment any videos you guys want us to uh, do because we're def- – we look at comments, so we'll definitely – uh, do what you guys want to do. Um, shout out to all the people that um, have subscribed for us from like Facebook or, or Instagram. Uh, and also our friends from uh, Hastings. Thank you guys so much for subscribing um, and Masters. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you guys so much for uh, watching the video. Uh, this has been Keen and Zach from uh, the Sports Scoop. Make sure that we'll be posting another video tomorrow, and we might be posting two videos a day uh, on the weekend. So we'll definitely have a video out tomorrow, so make sure to check that out. Thank you guys for watching. See ya.